strength. Ha. That's where your inner man has to come in. Ha. The stand of your faith, the stand of God's will, the stand against all odds, all norms, the stand against, oh, Rabbi, the stand for the truth, the stand for the unknown. Amen. Let's just play, you let's just pray real quick. Father, Lord, we just thank you, oh God, because you are so good, oh God. You are so worthy to be praised, oh God. We even thank you for such a time as this, oh God. We thank you for the words that's going to come forth, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that it would be your words, oh God. Your words will come out, oh God, and your will will be done on today in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we remove every flesh and gender in the mighty name of Jesus. But we want your spirit to overflow on this morning in the mighty name of Jesus so that it can penetrate the hearts of your people in Jesus name and God today we pray oh God that the word shall do what it needs to do in the mighty name of Jesus that it will not come out and then go it shall not go back forward in the mighty name of Jesus but God we thank you oh God we thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. It is so good to be in the house on this morning. It is such a privilege to be able to preach. It is such a privilege to be able to speak the word of God. So we just bless God first, and then I thank my pops for always just encouraging me and pushing me always. <laughs> Um, and I thank the church for receiving me also. And we just thank God for just how good and how awesome God has been. And today, it was kind of funny when Bishop was like, you know, you got to pray, you got to push the breakthrough season. It's a you season. And I was like, did this man look over in my notes? Because it is a you season. It is a you. The title of the message today is the agenda behind self-sabotage. And then there's a subtitle that says you against you. So when you were praying, I was like, all right, now, where you in there? <laughs> Amen. 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 But really quick, we're just going to chat just for a little bit. Because I know that sometimes it feels like all odds are against us. It feels like, okay, I keep trying and trying and trying. But then every time, there's always just something just hidden and being, you know, trying to take over. And also, sometimes we just take our time to just wallow in those things. We just say, well, the tired don't broke now. I'm just going to go ahead and just go home, <laughs> you know. But then Bishop said something. He said, I'm not going to let this owe me down. This is not going to frustrate me. This is just something I'm going to go ahead and fix tomorrow. But sometimes in situations, we find ourselves in like, the tire broke so what happened now so how do I there's so many things that we start to think about then we start to create those things against our own self it's almost like let's say you want to do something and um you know at work and your colleague is telling you um well I tried the same thing and it didn't work so I don't see why you got to try but in your mind in your heart you know that I can do this come on now you know your own strength but you start to have that doubt because somebody else has placed their own, their own, you know, their own mindset and their own words. They've spoken it in the atmosphere. And then you start to instantly, because we're human beings, we were being, uh, let's be honest with ourselves. We start to just allow those things to interject into our own life. And we start to forget that I can do this thing. Yeah. God has called me to do this thing. Yeah. You see, our mind starts to create its own agenda, not because you truly cannot do those things, not because you don't know how, but because of what you have heard, your mind, in your mind, you start to create something else and you start to create self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. Or have you ever told somebody about your dream or your aspirations and they go into this negative spiral <laughs> or they downplay the idea? And here comes doubt waiting for you at the door, just waiting to just embrace you. Because doubt, doubt is always ready. Doubt is always there. It's always there just waiting for you to just walk into it and say, I got you. <laughs> I, I got you. And also the circle that you keep or the ones you share your dreams with is a true representation of who you are. 
So the question is, does your circle uplift you or put you down? But that's not the topic for today. But it's just something for you to think about. Amen. Now, what is the thing that you have told yourself or convinced yourself that you cannot do? You see, sometimes I understand that these things can be due to fear. It can be due, due to our schedule, due to our time, due to our environment, even sometimes funding, you know, our skill set. It could be a lot of things, right? But we have to realize that those things, those things have shaped who we are. What we do with those things is we have to realize that those things are outside aspects. Mm -hmm. Since they add to our subconscious mind, it all goes down to what you believe. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, you start to believe, like, because I can't do this, and, or because mm -hmm. this is not what I want to go, where, where I want to go, then it's not going to happen. Right. Because of the outside aspect of things. Mm -hmm. And then we forget to look within. Look we forget to listen to that still voice that tells you, yes, you can do yeah. it. Yes, I understand that it's never been done in your family before, but yes, you can do it. Yes, I understand that you don't have the money, but yes, you can do it. You see, the Lord led me into the book of Daniel some weeks ago, and we're all very, very familiar with this. Um, but just a quick recap, Daniel and his three friends were chosen to work for the king, right? Yeah. And they, they had to be groomed and trained for the position. And um, we're going to go into Daniel 1, eight and, um, chapter 1 from 8 to 17. But really quick, just to, so that way we don't read the entire thing, we have to realize that Daniel asked the trainer to give them fruits and veggies instead of the actual food. I mean, come on. Who would choose that? I have this whole fist. I could be eating so much. I could be eating. I could eating the lobster, the shrimp. I could be enjoying life the best way I know fit. But Daniel said, you know, just, 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 give, us, just give us some fruits and veggies. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and read Daniel 1, 8 um, through 17. But Daniel resolved to not defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief officer for permission to not defile himself this way. Now God has caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my Lord, the king, who was assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than other young men your age? The king who, the king who then have my head because of you. Daniel said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, am I uh, Ananiah? Um, Misha and Azra, please test your servant for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with the young men who ate the royal food and treat your servant in accordance with, the, with what you see. So he agreed for this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the God took away their choice of food and wine. They were, they were to drink and give... Um, and gave them vegetables instead. Those, to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of lit literature and learning, and Daniel could understand vision and dreams of, for himself. Now, you see, that's not exactly where we're going, but what I want to mention is, you see, Daniel made a suggestion of giving us the veggies instead of the food. Mm -hmm. This is you. This is your tenacity. This is your self-determination. This is you have to see it first before somebody else sees it for you. Amen. You see, now what did the official say? He said, but you know, you're going to look much worse than those people. Mm -hmm. You see, we've done this so many times. We know how it goes. You know, we know exactly what you feed you guys to make you look better. What is the king going to say when he starts to see you looking worse? Mm -hmm. You see, there goes your outside aspect, the outside perspective, you know, the voices outside of your head. You know, you start to say, I understand you want to do it one way, mm -hmm. but, 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 look, come on now, you cannot compare. Mm -hmm. You know, you start this doubt at that moment, Daniel could start, he could have started doubting 
what he was saying, like, you know what? The chief official must, uh, must know what he's trying to say. Come on now. He must know because he's been doing this right now. Because that man really did have a point. Like, how could you compare somebody eating full-blown meals to somebody just eating vegetables? Come on. Sometimes even when we do the Daniel fast, we, we become slim. <laughs> Truth be told, we become very slim. But. He had to have the self-determination. He had to know, "Mm, this is what my Lord is saying. This is where my heart is at. This is what I want to do. And this is how it's going to be done. Now, this is where a lot of us were stuck. We start to see our own dreams and vision through somebody else's lens. The earth starts to appear bigger and bigger. You know, he really could have been like, well, sir, you're right. Let's go ahead and do it your way. That's where a lot of us are because we don't understand who we are. We don't understand what we carry. We don't understand what God has called us to be. And then we come into this place and people tell us exactly how to live our life, exactly what to do, exactly how to move. You see, in those moments, there's two choices. You can either conform with the voices outside your head or you can actually believe what you believe you see this is entitled you against the word for a reason because the truth of the truth of the matter is sometimes we as um believers we like to feel like victims we're like well they've done this and this and this and this you see the word is telling me this and this and this right but we like to feel we want people to say sorry to us sometimes let's be honest with ourselves you know always wanting people to tell us what to do what to believe but you have to understand that it is you against you it is not you against the word can do this and that and that that's none of your business it is you against you the fight is within you your breakthrough comes from you you see we can all over here pray for a breakthrough shout for a breakthrough but if you don't believe your own breakthrough you're never going to get your own breakthrough so you see a lot of us we're thinking oh i'm fighting against the word i'm fighting against no you're fighting against yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you don't understand who you are yes you see, Daniel 1, 12 and 13 says, test us with vegetables for, for 10 days and compare us with the, with the rest. You see, that's the power of self-strength instead of self-tabotage. You see, he could have literally agreed with the shift and say, you know what, you're right. But verse 15 says, at the end of 10 days, they look better and healthier than the others. Verse 17 says, God gave them knowledge, mastery of literature, and even more, he gave them wisdom. Yeah. Sometimes what you are desiring is on the other side of you. Not on the other side of the line. Not on the other side of anybody else. It's on the other side of you. Only you can crush through those uncomfortable situations. Only you can come through those uncommon things. A lot of us were in this place of doing the common things, doing the norms. But you have to understand that to get a to get a crush of you from you, you have to do. Th- those things that are not coming. Mm-hmm. Okay. You see, we have to sometimes go around the other path when everybody else is going this path. Yeah. Everybody else is saying, I'm going to go this oh, way yeah. because that person went this way and he worked for them this way. But God is saying for you to go that way. But because you don't know who you are, you start to say, well, God, this person got it exactly this way and he worked out for them. So why didn't I just reroute myself? How do you show? But you don't start to understand that the reroute he got over shot, it's a longer path that you are going to take because you don't understand you, because you don't understand the power that you carry. Instead of you to walk on your path, what you decide to do is you start, you decide to see your eye, your, your life through somebody else's eyes. If only you believe who God has called you to be. Only if you really take the time to know who you really are. Not what the word has set in your part. Not what they want for you. Not how they want you to look, how they want you to talk. You see, self-sabotage starts the moment when other voices are louder than the still voice in your head. When all you can hear is the outside, 
the outside, outside of your head, when all you can hear is that, then understand that at that very moment, the self-sabotage has started. At that very moment, when I tell somebody my dream, and they're telling me, well, 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 that's when the self-sabotage has started. At that very moment, when you know what you know, when you believe what you believe, and they start to tell you what to believe, and then you start to somehow believe them. At that very moment is when you start to sabotage yourself. This is not you against the word, my love. This is you against you. This is because you don't know who you are. This is because you don't know the anointing that you carry. This is because you cannot fight for yourself. This is because you see yourself as a victim. This is because you want to say, you want people to tell you, sorry. Grow up in Christ. Grow up in Christ. Let's mature. Mm -hmm. Let's mature and realize that God has placed us in a place that he can speak to us, that he can show us the way, that he can push us along, that even when it seems like we're making the right decision, the wrong decision, that's the thing about God. Sometimes it looks like we're making the wrong decisions. But because we're not God, and because those decisions are not the norms, it's so different for us as Christians. And we start to question, but God, did you really? <laughs> did, did you really? So the question is, who or what are you listening to in this season? Let's look at another familiar chapter in the book of Daniel. We're going to go into Daniel 3. Okay. This is about, we, again, this is a familiar story. This is about the gold statue that they made for the king. We all know it was grand. We all know what the king said to do. We all know everything that had to be done. Every time the sound was, you know, was heard. We know what we, you know, what the man told everybody to do. Right. But it says, the gold statue the king had built and ordered everyone to bow down to. You see, this is now talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But if we go back to chapter 1, I just want to show you something. You see, Shadrach's real name is Ananiah. Meshach's real name is Mishiah. Abednego is Azariah. And Daniel is Belteshazzar. Belt you see, before we can go forward, we have to understand that their names were changed to encourage them to, forgot, to forget God, to forget their tradition, to forget where they're coming from, so that they can conform to the things of the Babylon's ways and their gods. That's why their name were changed. They wanted to change it, the people's identity. You see, people can change who you are. People can talk and say, oh, they can create who you are for you. But you have to understand, regardless of what you call me, I know my name. Regardless of what you call me, I can push. Regardless of what the Lord, what they have said about me, I can still know that. I, I know I'm Mimi. I know what God has said about me. Regardless of what you want to call me on the street, regardless of what you want to call me in the church, I know what God has called me. But people change so that you can conform to the things that work for them. But you know, it's so funny that these three young men, yeah, the four young men, the, their names were changed. But guess what? They did not change. I wish that you could receive that. You see, people can try to change you. People can try to build you. People can try to destroy you. But what about you? What are you doing for you? Are you going to fight against you just like they're fighting against you? Come on now. How many of us have found our ourselves in a place that has compromised who we truly are or who or where we cannot be our true self in Christ. You see, sometimes our appearance are altered, our speech, our beliefs, our views and things just to fit in, just to fit in. But for the sake of time, let's go to um, Daniel 3 and 8. So Daniel 3 and 8, it says, At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to king, they said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn and all type of music must fall down and worship the image of the gold. Now, here's the thing. They planned against the Jews because they noticed that the three men were not bowing down. 
You see, I have to let you know that people are watching you. Even if you don't feel like you're being watched, people are watching you. People are watching you. People are watching you. They're trying to understand, but why does it look like this? But why does it sound like this? But why? But why? People are watching you because they're trying to see, oh, do they still believe in their God? Do they still have that faith? People are watching you. But you see, when they start to look, they start to realize that these three men were not bowing down. These three men, even though you, you went ahead and changed your name, you pretty much trained them to be the king's, you know, helper, but they're not bowing down. You see, they, they reminded the king of what the king has said. You see, some people right now, they're speaking against you. They're plotting against you. And they're reminding their leader of what, they, what the leader has said. You see, the leader wasn't even looking and searching for who was not bowing down. It was them other people that was the, them other people that was in the background saying like, oh, let's go tell the king what's going on now. They reminded the kings of this word that anyone not bowing down will be thrown into the fire. Let's read Psalms, um, I'm sorry, let's read Daniel 3, 14 to 15. It says, and um, the king said to them, is it true that you do not serve my God or worship the image <laughs> of God I have set up? Now you have heard the sound and all kind of music. If you're ready, if you if you're ready to fall down and bow to, um, bow and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you? Ha! Rescue you from my hand. But he said, but what God? So you have to understand that people will position you in a place where they know like you cannot find help, where they think that you cannot find help, where they think that they have have you pinned against the wall, where they think that there's no more that can come out of you. They they have come to a place, they have agreed within themselves even before you agree within you. They have agreed for you that who will save you from this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but he says, but if you won't. We can see again that this man was presented with two choices. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you will always have a choice. Either to go with the odds or go against the odds. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sorry to say, but a lot of us believers, we find ourselves in a place conforming more to the odds. Oh, I'm, so I'm just reminding you that it's you against you. It's you against you. Verse 17 says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty hands. He got a shot. But then he says, but even if he does not, he got show. We want you to know, show your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of God that you have set up. Jesus. Again, we see the stand of strength. Ha. That's where your inner man has to come in. Ha. The stand of your faith. The stand of God's will. The stand against all odds or numbs. The stand against oh, Rabbi, the stand for the truth. The stand for the unknown. Understanding, yeah, yes, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I am willing to go on the other side and find out. On the other side of myself. You see, if you never go, you will never find out. You would never find out. You see, your next great thing is requiring access from you. It is you, love. We need to stop blaming everybody else. We need to stop blaming where we come from. We need to stop blaming the environment, the money that we didn't have. Our parents, we need to stop blaming that. And we need to realize that it is you against you. Jesus, verse 20 and 22, verse 22, 22 says, 
And he, and the king commanded, because they didn't bow. And the king commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the armies to tie the three men up and show them into blazing fire. So this man wearing their robes, trousers to burn, and other clothes were bound and shown into the blazing um, furnace. The king command was so urgent and the, the furnace so hot and the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up yeah. the man. Jesus, Jesus, you see, <laughs> I want you to understand that when you know who you are and when you stand on who you are and who God has called you to be and when you let your faith work for you in this season, you see those ones that are tying you up, no matter how hot the fire is, let me tell you, no matter how much you have been going through it, the Lord is saying just stand. Just stand in this season. I just encourage you to just stand in this season just stand in this season just a couple of Sundays ago the man of God was saying that we do not need to fight he just said stand 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 in the season and understand that those ones that are he said the strongest soldiers I understand that they're stronger than you. I understand that their capacity is bigger than yours. I understand that you're not like them. I understand that in front of them, in front of you, they look like giants to you. I understand. But guess what? The very people that tied them up, they got burned. And you know what? The good part of all of this was when we go to verse 27, it says, the kosha the three men were not burnt. He kasoko, the servants were. You see, you have to realize that nothing touched even their clothes. <laughs> and even when they came out of that hot fire that just killed men, they did not even smell like smoke. Oh, Jesus, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand. I wish you understand. You see, I understand that the fire is very hot right now. Oh, Rabasa. This really quick, I'm going to have to skip a little bit because this is the perfect place to say. Because Psalms 23 and 4 say, Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 91, Psalm 91 and 7 say, A thousand may fall on my side and ten thousand on my right hand, but it shall not come in my door. Meaning, yes, you will have opposition. Yes, the plans will derail from you. Yes, trials and tribulations are bound to happen. You see, we're not fools. We know that. We know that because even the word of God said that in multiple places. He said these things will happen. So why do you continue to run backwards when something happened? Why do you continue to stay in places that they don't like you? Why do you continue to stay in places that your anointing does not get to speak. Jesus. Oh, you know what God has called you to do. You know how strong you are. You know when you get into, into your prayer closet, you know what can happen. You know. But then why does when one thing happen, it's like you allow your entire life to crumble down from that. I understand we're humans and we have to err when we have to err. We have to cry when we have to cry. But sometimes you got to stand, stand tall, stand taller. And they, start, they will start to wonder, but how is she standing tall? How is he standing tall with all these attacks that we're throwing? With the fire being so hot, he got about shoturabosa. How is he standing tall? How come he went in the fire and he came out with no smoke, not even a smoke? You can't even smell it on him. How come? Come, Jesus, Jesus, oppositions are there, and we know it. And you have to understand that there will, there will always be there. But then we have to remind ourselves what God has even said. He said, no matter what he does, no matter what happened, it will not come near you, my love. 
So that's a word for you to hold on to. It will not come near you. I understand that even, even right now, you, you feel like, God, I've hit a wall. I remember I preached a, some, some Sundays ago. Um, the Lord was saying, God, I hit a wall, but you didn't hit a wall. You, I, I'm holding you. I'm the wall. I'm the wall. So right now, I don't care where you're at. I don't care how strong, I don't care how weak you are. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how it looks right now. I don't care what they have said against you. I don't care how they have pushed you aside. I don't care what you are, what lies. Sometimes you tell yourself lies. Because, again, we want to feel like a victim. We want to be babied and be carried around. And somebody call you, you've got to tell them everything. Well, this is not going so well. And they start to just tell you this and that. And before you know it, <laughs> it's like a whole spiral of negativity <laughs> just around. But how do we conquer self-sabotage? The first thing is understanding who you are in Christ. And that is going to be in Isaiah 42 and 1. I hope this is helping somebody. Amen. Isaiah 42 and 1. It says, Here is my servant whom I have uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight in. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nation. That's who you are. You are God's servant. You are God. You are the one that God has uphold. You are the chosen one that, that whom God's delight in. You are the one that he has put the spirit, a spirit on you. And he will bring justice to your nation. You have to understand who you are. And then um, the second thing is see yourself as God sees you. Yes. See yourself as God sees you. Yes. That's important because a lot of time we see ourselves based on circumstances. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves based on what we have, what we can control. We see ourselves based on our own limitations, mm -hmm. on our own strengths, on our own skill set. Really quick, we're, we're all going to go here together. We're going to read um, King James Version. It's going to be Luke 4, 18 and 19. Again, that's Luke 4, King James Version, 18 and 19. So King James, Luke 4, 18 and 19. If you have it. Say amen. 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 The reason why we have to read this together is because, like I said, it's you against you. I can't help you. I'm sorry. I can only probably maybe position your heart in the right way to receive. You know, I could, I could somehow. But the but um, if you're ready, we're going to read this together. Luke 4, 18 and 19. It says... Ready? Yes. Okay. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the, acceptance year, the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to read the 18 just one more time in case you didn't get it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. You have to understand that God has anointed you and the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Don't ever question who you are in Christ because right there, Right there, it tells you that his spirit mm -hmm. is upon you mm -hmm. because he has anointed you. you. So what does that say about you? You are anointed. Yes, we are. You are his chosen. Mm -hmm. Jesus. You, Jesus. Jesus. You. you see, know that the spirit of the Lord is upon you and he has, he has assignment laid out for you. And you know another thing, we conquer by the spirit of God yet again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
because the first the first one was understand who you are in Christ. The second one is see yourself as God sees you. The third one is we conquer by the Spirit of God. Ephesians 3, 3 and 16 says that he, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with, with might, true is spirit in the inner man. Your inner man that's how you get strengthened in your spirit because the only way that you can receive god is through your spirit and that's why he gives it to your spirit the, he says he says it will strengthen to, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man you have to understand the strength of your inner man you have to understand that that is where your strength actually comes from that is where your tenacity actually comes from that is where your push actually comes from that is where your glory actually comes from that is where the peace that you are wanting actually comes from it says your inner man is your spirit man yeah. now this is where I'm gonna lose some people your spirit, your spirit man or your inner man can be either strong or weak. Mm -hmm. It can be either clean or filthy, depending on what you do. Mm -hmm. So, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Are you feeling your inner man the right things? Yes. Are you encouraging yourself? Or are you standing in a place where you have agreed with everybody else against your own self? Everybody else is already against you. So then why are you against you? You have to understand you and realize that the battle is a lot already. And having self-doubt and not knowing who you are now that that's the kicker right there yeah, because you. then that's when the sabotage mm -hmm. comes in place mm -hmm. and we have to allow god to refresh us in this season so that we can encounter him in a fresh place Amen. a lot of us were in this still place we still place i'm sorry we're in this place where it's just mundane routine for us now we have to encounter god in a way that we know that that's my father speaking. Yes. And whatever my father says is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what they're telling me. Regardless of what it looks like. Or regardless of what I've been telling myself. So I come to encourage you on today. Amen. To change what you have been speaking against yourself. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Because the word is already against you all mm -hmm. enough. It's already tiring enough. Mm -hmm. You're already fighting so much more. Yeah. So why are you against you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray right now, oh God. We thank you for your word that has come forth, oh God. Father, we thank you because you have done such a mighty thing in the house on this morning, oh God. Yeah. We pray, oh God, that you start to reveal to your children who they really are in you, oh God. That you start to reveal their strength, oh God. Their inner man, oh God. That you start to flow through them to their spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. That you start to touch them according to their needs in the name of Jesus. That you start to push I cancel the agenda of the enemy against your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I cancel the word curse over your mind in the name of Jesus. I cancel the battle over your mind in the name of Jesus. That have you questioning who you are. That have you questioning who God has called you to be. That made you forgot that you are anointed. I cancel that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. But I pray for power on this morning. I pray for the peace of God on this morning. I pray for the strength of God on this morning. Morning. I pray that the Lord continue to touch you in a place, in a new place. That from today on, that you shall know who you are and that you shall stand in front of adversity. That you shall know that no matter how, how much of an opposition that you have, no matter how much they're against you, you shall stand. Oh, Rabasa, on the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.